Hi guys, Cinematic Recapped here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I'm gonna explain an American post-apocalyptic science fiction and adventure movie, called Waterworld. The movie is set in the year 2500, where the polar ice caps have completely melted, and sea levels have risen over 25,000 feet, covering nearly all of the Earth's continents. The remains of human civilization have been forced to adapt to the new world. They live on rugged, floating communities known as atolls, having long forgotten about living on land. It is believed that a mythological dry land exists somewhere in the endless ocean. Elsewhere, a lone drifter, known as the Mariner, sails the earth in his trimaran constructed from random pieces of scrap. He lives by recycling his own urine as drinking water and spends his days scavenging for artifacts at the bottom of the ocean. While he is diving, someone gets into his boat and steals the fruit from his little lime tree. As he surfaces, the Mariner sees another boat with a drifter on board. The drifter tells the Mariner of an atoll settlement eight days to the east where he can resupply. However, the two decide not to make a trade when they see a gang of pirates, known as the Smokers, appear near them. The Smokers immediately head to the floating bag of goods which the Mariner found earlier. While the drifter sets sail, he reveals that he was the one who stole the Mariner's limes. Furious, the Mariner quickly activates a custom mode on his boat, rising the sail and giving his boat enough speed to collect his bag of goods. He then sails right over the drifter's small boat and destroys it, leaving him for the smokers. After sailing for days, the Mariner finally arrives at the atoll. At first, he is not allowed in, but the guards allow him in after he shows that he has a jar full of dirt, the most valuable commodity at the time, in exchange for other supplies. After that, the Mariner discovers that the people inside the atoll live in poverty and hunger. He parks his boat and meets the atoll's enforcer who gives him two hours to do his business. In the market, the merchant offers him large amounts of currency, known as chits, for his pure dirt, and the trade is finally made after he demands double that amount. Meanwhile, a guy named Noor is asking an old man about a tattooed girl. It turns out that the tattoo has markings showing the location of Dryland. Noor then spots the girl, Anola, being cared for by Helen, a local barmaid. Shortly after, the mariner finds the store and spends his chits on hydro, a tomato plant, and all the shelves at the store for his boat. When he returns to his boat, a family suddenly asks him to take their daughter with him so that he can impregnate her because inbreeding within the colony has resulted in undesirable offspring. However, the mariner refuses for some reason, causing them to be suspicious of him. Therefore, the atoll's residents immediately detain him before leaving, and one of them discovers that the mariner is a mutant, with gills behind his ears and webbed feet. Horrified by the mutation, the guards quickly attack him, and the mariner fights back, until he is eventually caught in a net and imprisoned until further notice. That night, he is locked up in a cage hanging over the docks. As a group of youths scavenge his trimaran and steal some of his goods, the mariner spots Nor from sneaking out of the atoll from afar. On the other hand, Helen talks to her friend, Gregor, an eccentric investor who desperately seeks to find dry land. Helen says that they should leave as soon as possible for Enola's safety because people start talking about the girl. However, Gregor frustratedly says that they cannot leave until he manages to read the map to Dryland on Enola's back. Besides that, the girl's background is also mysterious because she loves to draw pictures, many of which she does not recognize either. Afterwards, Enola innocently mentions that the Mariner may know how to read the map. Because of that, Gregor approaches him and starts asking him about his mutations. He also asks if he knows where Dryland is, but their conversation is suddenly cut short by the Enforcer and Gregor ends up leaving him. The following morning, the elders gather around the mariner and decide to recycle him by drowning him in a pit of organic sludge. At the same time, an atoll's lookout spots a large army of smokers, led by the deacon, coming to their settlement in search of Enola. Luckily, the mariner's execution is called off as the residents start to panic about the impending attack. When the smokers begin their attack, Helen attempts to escape with Enola on a hot air balloon created by Gregor, but the balloon is released early by mistake, leaving Helen and Enola behind. After that, the two spot the mariner, whose cage was knocked into the sludgy pit during the attack. Just before he drowns, Helen quickly frees him and insists that he will take both of them with him. The mariner immediately boards into his trimaran, while Helen and Enola open the atoll's gate as an escape route. Meanwhile, the deacon spots them escaping, so he orders his gunman to stop them. However, the mariner launches his harpoon and drags the gunner's boat, thereby firing the deacon's boat, causing it to explode. As a result, the Mariner, Helen, and Enola escape safely, leaving the wrecked atoll to the smokers. Nor, who turns out to be the smoker's spy, 
leads his boss to some of the survivors for questioning. According to information from one of them, the deacon learns that Enola has escaped with the mariner who is a mutant. Hence, he alerts his crew about their new mission to find her. Returning to the trio, Helen asks the mariner if he knows where Dryland is, which he does. However, he tells her that they will make it all the way to Dryland if they throw Enola overboard due to their limited supplies. Helen clearly insists on keeping Enola and tries to change his mind by offering herself up in return, but he refuses her anyway. She then grabs a harpoon gun and threatens the mariner that all of them will go to Dryland together, but he drops his sail on her, pinning her down, and knocks her out with a large paddle. The smoker's base is located a giant oil tanker, filled with many smokers inside seeking for Dryland. Inside, the doctor gives the deacon a prosthetic eye after his eye was damaged in the previous battle, but his attempt seems to fail, so the deacon decides to wear an eye patch instead. He then inspects the ship's oil supply and finds it is getting dangerously low. Hence, the deacon is quick to state that their main focus is to find the tattooed girl, so he sends out a plane to search for her. Long story short, Helen and Enola become worried on the boat as their supplies are running low day by day. At one point when the mariner finds Enola's drawing on his boat, he becomes furious and decides to throw her overboard. Helen frantically screams that the girl cannot swim, so she dives in after her. Fortunately, the mariner still gives them a chance to live and goes back to pick them up. At that moment, the smoker's plane sent by the deacon earlier spots their trimaran. To keep their location a secret, the mariner prepares a weapon to fire from below deck, but Helen hurriedly fires the harpoon at the plane, killing the gunner and tethering the plane to the trimaran with a metal rope. The plane starts to circle the boat, slowly destroying it. Because of that, the mariner is forced to climb his sail to cut the rope, but the pilot manages to shoot the rope first as a means of escape. The boat slings forward and the whiplash sends the mariner plunging into the water. Enraged, he pins Helen down and cuts her hair viciously, telling her not to touch anything on his boat without his permission. As Enola protests, he also cuts the girl's hair and confiscates all her crayons, so that she cannot draw on his boat anymore. After returning to the base, the pilot informs his boss of the girl's location. The deacon is thrilled to hear that. He then confidently predicts which route they will take, while ordering his crew to intercept them ahead. Later, the mariner spots another drifter who has raised a neutral flag. Seeing this, Helen convinces him to make a trade with the man, saying that they really need food. While the two of them are trading, Helen tries to make a fishing rod. The drifter claims that he has paper, but the mariner does not have much to offer in return. Therefore, he requests for half an hour with Helen. Despite her protests, the mariner agrees, and she goes below deck with a strange man. At the same time, the mariner quickly reads the paper, but he does not seem to find anything valuable after reading it. Hence, he goes down and informs the drifter that their deal is off. The man becomes agitated and tries to kill the mariner. Helen returns to the top as the fight ensues, with the mariner coming out victorious. He then dumps his body into the sea and scavenges his boat for useful items. Desperate for food, the mariner takes Helen's fishing rod and throws it in the water, telling her that she will not catch anything with it. Instead, he shows Helen and Enola how he searches for food. He then takes his harpoon gun and dives into the water acting as a bait. While a large mutated shark tries to swallow him, the mariner uses the harpoon gun to kill the mutated fish and cooks it for the trio to eat. After eating together, Anola looks at the mariner's webbed feet and wishes if she had feet like his so she can swim. The next morning, the mariner teaches her how to swim, and Helen watches them, admiring the bond that they are creating. Several days later, the group comes to an outpost for repairs. When the mariner tries to communicate, the lookouts in the tower do not respond to them. As a result, he becomes suspicious and decides to use an underwater periscope, only to find that the smokers are positioned underwater to ambush them. At the last minute, the mariner realizes the ambush and turns his boat to escape. They barely manage to escape, even after the deacon opens fire with his rifle, wounding the mariner. Not long after, the mariner wants to know why the smokers chasing after them. Helen eventually reveals that Enola has a tattoo on her back that leads to dry land, but he still insists that dry land is a myth, saying that he has sailed further than anyone but has never seen it. Afterwards, Helen angrily asks him about all things on his boat which no one has ever seen and demands to know where he collected his dirt. Therefore, the mariner provides her with a homemade diving bell and takes her to view the underwater remains of the submerged city. He also shows her the dirt he sold at the atoll at the bottom of the sea, affirming Helen's belief. When they surface, they find that the smokers have caught up to them, threatening to kill them if they do not hand over Enola, who is hiding aboard the boat. However, the deacon bluffs the other's deaths by firing his gun in the air, and Enola reveals herself, 
only to be caught by the smokers. With Enola in his hand, the deacon orders his crew to kill the mariner and Helen while burning the trimaran. Fortunately, the mariner is able to escape with Helen by diving underwater to avoid capture, and he kisses her so that he can breathe for both of them. As they surface, the two find that Enola was gone and his boat has been destroyed. For the first time, the mariner finally opens up to Helen, telling her about his loneliness all along. Without further ado, Helen kisses him, and this time, he reciprocates. The following morning, the mariner looks for anything useful below deck, where he finds Enola's drawings of various dryland objects, including trees. He then looks through his own collection of National Geographic magazines and recognizes trees on the cover. With that, he realizes that dryland may really exist. After a while, both of them are suddenly found by Gregor who appears in his hot air balloon. He then takes them to a new makeshift atoll inhabited by the survivors of the first attack. At night, they discuss plans to find dry land, and that they need Enola to do that, but some of them protest that rescuing her is too dangerous. Luckily, the mariner says that he will go and rescue the girl alone. He then takes a boat and finds the oil tanker, secretly boarding it. He quietly kills anyone who comes across as the deacon prepares the crowd on deck for his speech. The deacon states that they start rowing to dry land, and sends his crew to release massive oars from the side of the tanker to conserve oil, not knowing the deacon has to decode the map first. As the smokers run below deck, the mariner confronts the deacon and holds out a flare, threatening to ignite the oil reserves in the tanker unless he returns Enola. The deacon calls his bluff, knowing that it would destroy the ship, but to his surprise, the mariner drops the flare into the oil reservoir. As a result, the ship explodes in flames and begins to sink. In the ensuing chaos, the deacon takes Enola and attempts to escape with her on his plane, but the mariner is able to stop him with an old anchor cable before he can take off. He ends up rescuing the girl and the two embrace. Meanwhile, Gregor appears above them in his hot air balloon with Helen and the Atoll Enforcer on board. They immediately let down a rope for the mariner to escape. As he brings Enola to Helen, the deacon grabs the rope to escape the sinking ship, but then he is kicked off by the mariner into the water. The deacon finds a loose jet ski and uses his gun to shoot the hot air balloon, shaking Enola from the balloon and into the ocean. As he and some of his men converge on Enola to capture her, the mariner makes an impromptu bungee jump from the balloon to grab Enola, right before the deacon and his men collide on their jet skis and die in an explosion. As the tanker sinks, the survivors see the words Exxon Valdez printed on the stern. At that time, Gregor finally manages to identify the tattoo on Enola's back as the coordinates in the reverse directions. After a few days of flying, the group eventually discover the dry land, covered with vegetation, wildlife, and all things they have never seen before. They also find a small hut with the remains of Enola's parents. The enforcer suggests that they should follow ancient burial traditions and give Enola's parents final rest. While everyone is having fun in dry land, the mariner feels that he does not belong on it. Instead, he feels the ocean is his home and decides to build a new wooden trimaran to leave the land. Enola is annoyed by his decision, complaining that she does not want him to leave, but the girl finally understands. Helen and Enola bid him farewell, but before he leaves, the mariner promises to tell others about dry land and will lead them there. The movie ends with Helen and Enola climbing to the highest hill to watch him sail away, and they discover a plaque revealing they are standing on the top of Mount Everest. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.